Martin Bailey Castles first appeared in England following the Norman Conquest and William the Conqueror's successful invasion of the country from Normandy. They came about due to the need for William to stamp his power and authority on the English, who as you can expect, didn't like the prospect of being ruled over by a Frenchman. Following his victory over the popular and rather rich Earl of Wessex Harold Godwinson, he was a very unpopular man in his newly conquered kingdom. Those in the north of the country still adhered to the Dane law and sought their laws from Denmark and identified with those Viking conquests that had gone before. In fact, the Viking influence was still extremely strong in the north. Throughout his reign, however, William needed to gain control of the rebellious nation, and he did this in many ways, for example, instigating the feudal system onto society and by altering religion by creating churches everywhere. One of his most prominent methods of instilling power, however, was the creation of the Motton Bailey Castle in England. These wooden castles we've covered in a different video, however they were quick and easy to build and cheap to make, and quickly instilled intimidation into the population, showing the people who was in fact in control. Today we're going to talk about how you would successfully take a Motton Bailey Castle if you were a rebellious Anglo-Saxon, and also what to look out for in the different parts of the fortification as you attack. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. In terms of attacking a Motton Bailey castle, an attacking army would have a number of different options. First of course they could besiege a castle, as it could possibly be isolated outside of the gatehouse. This in theory would prevent the castle from being stocked up with food, and could lead to the slow starving of the castle's custodian, the garrison of soldiers there, and also any workers inside the castle. Of course, as Motton Bailey castles are also made from wood, Another option would be to use fire to just torch a castle, and hopefully that would be enough. But we're going to look at how to successfully storm a Motton Bailey, taking you through each section, and showing you what you would need to be careful of. Now first of all, most of the footage in this video is from other Motton Bailey castles such as Pickering, which is a classic Motton Bailey design, however of course the wooden castle here was replaced by stone in the 13th and 14th century, but it still maintains its Motton Bailey style. You're also going to see footage from many other different castles around England. Now if you were attacking a Motton Bailey, then you'd first be faced with a huge wooden structure, and looking from the outside you'd see a large wooden fence, a large ditch in front, and also a wooden gatehouse. So what equipment would you need? Well firstly, you'd need a very strong army, which could be diverse in its weaponry it would need to be armed with. You would need an army adept with close combat fighting with good armour, once you were inside the fortification, but also, you'd want some archers as well. Now we're not going to get into the debate of whether fire arrows were effective or not, in terms of peppering the castle with fire arrows and burning it down, but archers would be an excellent way of attacking the castle, whilst unable to get access into the interior. You'd possibly want a lot of supplies also based nearby, in order to keep your army healthy and fresh, and also possibly an encampment close by too. Now the attacking army has arrived outside of the castle, the first thing you'd want to consider is the fact you'd need to probably cross the ditch, as the defenders would have brought in the drawbridge that crossed it, and possibly put a portcullis or another gate down from the gatehouse. So above the ditch would be the significantly large wooden fence or the palisade, and you'd need to bring part of this down to gain access, or you could even attack the castle head on via the gatehouse. Above the gatehouse would probably be guards or archers, who would try to attack the invaders from above but an army would need to quickly attack the defenders and overwhelm this part of the castle. The ditch would have probably been filled with water, human waste, animal waste or even long and sharp stakes to help put off an attacker. The army would probably be best with crossing the ditch and trying to take down part of the palisade. Crossing the ditch would leave the invaders vulnerable and susceptible to attack from above from the archers. The reason the ditch was built was to slow down attackers and in a sense trap them inside a difficult to escape ditch and defenders could then rain arrows down from above onto them. So you could either attack across the ditch away from the main entrance, or when you've dispatched a few of the guards at the gatehouse, you could then storm the defended gate. I'm sure also that some armies took a large wooden bridge, to put across the ditch once the castle's defences had been softened up. After storming the gate the attackers would be inside the main heart of the castle, the outer bailey. This is the area where the majority of activity inside the castle's walls would occur, where most of the workers would be based. You'd expect to find blacksmiths, carpenters, kitchens and other wooden buildings inside here, but also you'd find barracks for soldiers, who were tasked with protecting the castle. So you'd expect to see intense hand-to-hand -hand fighting occurring in this area, and much devastation and destruction. 
The attackers would also usually torture outbuildings and burn them to the ground, whilst also possibly massacring the civilians based here. It's important to remember that ordinary people would live inside this area of the castle, and in the furor of battle, they would possibly be killed and taken as defenders of the castle, but of course blacksmiths and so on could also double up as soldiers. The best way of possibly taking the bailey was by sheer overwhelming the defenders, as thousands of soldiers wouldn't be based here, so strength in numbers by the attackers was a good thing. This would also be an area where the hand-to-hand -hand combat would be brutal, and also where soldiers skilled in this could be very effective. Some defenders would have naturally retreated also to the keep and the inner bailey, as a last bastion of defence. So imagine the attackers have established control inside the inner bailey, defeating a large number of soldiers who were tasked with protecting the castle. Now the main prize to wipe out the castle's influence was by destroying the keep and massacring the garrison and also the castle's owner inside the keep. Inside the bailey there would be a few things you need to watch out for such as towers. These could be built inside the palisades and could be a good vantage point for archers to strike down upon an enemy with arrows. As these were wooden, they could be torched from the bottom, which would have been horrific for the guards base there. Also towers could be linked up with each other with a rampart, a walkway that linked up the different towers. These were continued in Stonekeep castles, as it allowed guards to quickly move around the castle to effectively defend, so it'd be your best idea to possibly bring down the towers and subsequently the ramparts. In fact, all tall fortifications inside the castle would probably need to come down. So the next thing the attackers would need to do is to cross over to the inner bailey and to the keep. The keep is the main castle building that sits on top of a mot. A mot was primarily the best defensive element of the castle, being a huge hill or a mound which had very steep sides in order to keep attackers out. The mot would possibly be partially surrounded by a palisade on the sides, enclosing the bailey. However, the sheer steepness of the mot, coupled with a fence or palisade that sat on top, would be enough from trying to prevent attackers from taking the castle this way. Usually linking up the mot with the inner bailey or the keep would be another bridge, which would usually lead up to the castle. Now the bridge could be very easily cut by the defenders if an attack was taking place, giving the inner bailey and the keep a degree of safety being completely isolated. This however could lead to a big siege, so defenders would need to make sure that the keep was well stocked with food and also had a good water source or a well. Obviously the well could be poisoned by attackers if they discovered where the water was coming from. Near to the flying bridge or drawbridge would be another gatehouse which would add protection to this area and also act as a way of guards checking access to the most exclusive part of the castle. So the attackers could possibly either besiege the keep or attack but they'd need to defeat the gatehouse where archers would be based to be able to do this. The best way of possibly crossing the ditch before the gatehouse would be to overwhelmingly charge the mot but this would result in a number of casualties, or simply launch surprise attacks in the dark. Also you'd possibly target the palisade on top of the mot with fire, and also the gatehouse, but remember that the mot did offer 360 degree views of the surrounding area. You'd also need another large bridge to cross from the outer bailey to the inner, and to get your soldiers across there when the time came. If you didn't have a bridge then the attackers would have to climb or crawl up the steep sides of the mot, which would be incredibly risky, and left them very exposed. Stationed in the gatehouse wouldn't have been a large number of guards too, so you need to overwhelm them and possibly torture gatehouse on the way through. Remember that a large part of the defenders would have also been killed inside the bailey, so you'd need to see off the final part of the castle's defences. Chances are though, if the attackers managed to gain en masse access to the gate of the mot, the chances are that the castle would have fallen. The inner bailey is a walled enclosure where the castle sits, and this was placed on top of the mot, and it was without doubt the most secure area of the castle. It's a small area and in fact, if a large number of soldiers stormed the area, then it could have easily fallen. The inner bailey as mentioned earlier, was enclosed by a wooden palisade adding security. The keep building is the castle building that sits upon the high ground. These before they were turned into stone were obviously made from wood, and were very vulnerable to fire. Inside the keep would have been the castle's owner or a lord, placed there by the king and also a number of guards and defenders who would have been adept with hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as archers. Their only job would be to guard the castle and see off the threat. The attacker's best chance of taking this again was of course strength in numbers and skilled fighters. Some keeps were incredibly simple and had just one floor, however sometimes attackers would need to fight their way up to the top of the keep to claim victory. The best strength however would be to simply set fire to the keep before much of the fighting inside the structure took place. 
Once the castle's keep was brought down, the attackers would have been successful. So really, in terms of attacking a Mott and Bailey castle, the biggest strength to an army would have been to use fire, and possibly overwhelm the complex with a large number of soldiers. Yes, the defender's base there would have been experienced and well equipped, however we're not talking about thousands of soldiers garrisoned inside the walls. The Mott and Bailey castle was extremely effective in terms of how it operated, and it was planned and built in a way that made it extremely difficult for the English rebels to take control. You'd need to consider that these fortifications were new, and that the standard English rebel wouldn't be familiar with their layout. The main objective for the attackers would have been to take the tower or keep, and it was the job of the defenders to make this as impossible a task as it could be. The defenders would constantly be peppering arrows at the attackers, making it incredibly difficult to take ground without suffering heavy losses. But overall the Mott and Bailey was an effective structure that later improved significantly with the replacement of wood materials with stone. Once again thank you for watching, we hope you've enjoyed this different video. To support our channel please make sure to subscribe. Once again thank you for watching.